question most people ask me about the aurora is does it look the same to the naked eye as in photographs? One side is the naked eye, the other side is the photograph. Maybe the photographer is cheating, but in actual fact it's hard to see the reds and it's a long exposure that gives you the colours. Now this is the sort of place you need to go if you want to see the aurora. It's up near the Arctic, it's very cold, it's very icy, it's about minus 40. And this place is Whitehorse in uh, Canada. And this was my first view of the aurora. And it was almost hard to see, you, you just weren't quite sure what you were looking at. But again, it was about a 30 second exposure in camera which brought out these lights. And sometimes, okay, what happened, I was there for four nights and on the last night I'm thinking nothing's going to happen, that was my best shot. But we had this amazing Valentine's Day explosion in the sky, a five hour geomagnetic storm as a result of what they call a possible, possible coronal mass ejection. The following year, I returned to Whitehurst. I thought if four days was fantastic, then ten days was going to be absolutely amazing. But this is the weather we got. We got a lot of snow, we got a lot of hoar frost, we got minus 40, but it was just exquisitely beautiful. And we got one night of aurora. So I made the most of it. Sometimes... There are places you need to go where you're going to get good weather. Finland, Greenland, um, even Iceland is not too bad. So the thing is, it's very disappointing when you go looking for aurora if you don't have something else to do. So I was there for the Yukon Quest, which is a thousand mile dog sled race. And that goes from White Horse to Fairbanks. And we followed this race for 500 miles. And I must say, you know, it was a heroic race. Now, what about Iceland? It, this small island is a bit of a magnet for clouds, but it's also a magnet for photographers. So we go there to see the sort of shots we can get. And I guess you're looking at this and saying, it's just a few clumps of ice. What are you going to do? But this is the sort of shot we're looking for. We're looking for those ice crystals, the black sand, the, sw the swirling water. And um, the ocean pounds on the shore... So, and it's got big lumps of ice in it. So you've got to have very quick reflexes, waterproof boots, and take a lot of shots so you get the ones that you want. And that evening, a high-intensity aurora burst over the land and lasted for hours. So what causes the aurora? It's the sun. It's sort of a bit like the sun having a great big fart. <laughs> because the sunspot... Activity releases a solar wind which travels to Earth. It has a magnetic field, it hits the Earth's magnetic field and it enters a portal. And in, in, in that portal it sort of swings and slingshots around the Earth and then gets attracted to the poles. And the oxygen atoms become quite excited. So um, while they're being excited, they're not casting out the light, but as the, uh, the atoms calm that creates a light and the aurora can be all sorts of things it can be a pale color on the horizon it can be a swirling curtain of color it can be something like this where it just fills the sky and um, the thing is there are no two auroras are alike now while Iceland is actually quite green Greenland is actually pretty icy and um It's just amazing because I don't think, you sort of think, well, who would live here? But there's 4,000 people and 3,000 dogs. <laughs> there used to be more dogs, but they're, not, they're sort of using sleds a bit more, um, you know, snowmobiles. But at night, you can look out of the window of where you're staying and see the aurora in the sky. So you rug up and you go out. You never go out without gloves and warm clothes because it is excruciatingly painful. And during the day, you need something to do. So what do you do? You go dog sledding. And this was a case of seven mushers, seven dogs, uh, seven mushers, seven passengers and 96 dogs. 
And the whole experience was quite terrifying at times, but always amazing and an amazing insight into another way of life. And at night, the aurora danced in the sky. The dogs bedded down for the night and they were pretty oblivious to the display. The mushers had seen it all before, so they stayed in the hut drinking tea. And the crazy tourists danced in the snow and ooing and ahhing and taking lots of photos. And some people worry that the moonlight might wipe out the aurora, but only a very weak aurora would be overpowered by the moon's glow. And in fact, the moonlight lights up the landscape. And this photo won me a small camera in an astrophotography competition, so I was pretty pleased with that. And this was a night when the aurora was, you know, full bloom and you could actually see those reds with the naked eye. They weren't just coming out in the camera. And it was a bit of a win, so I hung onto my camera for an hour and a half, my tripod, for an hour and a half in a howling gale. I got 170 frames, I got 11 second time lapse, but it does show the aurora dancing. And I think the thing we need to remember in these countries is that they, they are the proverbial canary canary in the global coal mine and you're seeing the, re the effects of this, the melting sea ice, the smalling, smaller icebergs, the retreating glaciers. But I think we've got to realise that there's much in the world to make us gaze in wonder and as someone once said, life is not measured in the breaths that you take but in the moments that take your breath away. Thank you. <laughs>